Hi everyone, I'm Amy, this is my partner Maggie, and together we are Thinker Thema, and today we're doing a Kickstarter preview for the game Backyard Chickens mm -hmm. by father and son duo uh, Don and Adrian Gilstrap. What we're going to do today is just give you a brief overview of the game and then talk about how it plays and why it might be a good back for you. So in Backyard Chickens, we are all, well, trying to keep chickens. And we wanna, wanna make sure that whatever our flock we have, that we make them happy and that we actually have the absolute best flock there is and definitely better than our neighbors who are also keeping chickens. Um, so the main thing we're gonna make sure of is that we're going to be uh, feeding them, uh, making sure they have water, making sure that ideally they get the treats that they like and making sure that we keep them as happy as possible because if they're not happy, well, one, they lay fewer eggs, uh, but if they're really, really not happy because we haven't been feeding them very well they're going to leave us mm. and so they should. Now the way that this game plays is a classic deck builder so if you're a fan of that genre this is a very pure form of a deck builder. What you're going to be starting with is a 10 card starter deck. In that starter deck you'll have a combination of water cards that are worth one water and yard scraps which are the food and they're worth one food. And what you're going to be doing throughout the course of the game is drawing six cards from that deck and then using those six cards, you're going to have to keep your, your chickens, as um, Maggie suggested, well fed and well watered or not thirsty and <laughs> quenched. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the interesting things that happen in, in this game is when you draw those six cards, and some of them are going to be food and some of them are going to be water. You need to allocate them to the chickens. Your starter chickens that you start with two um, only need one food and one water. So you can see that I can very easily give them one food and one water. My leftover food goes into my discard pile on the right hand side of my player board. Now, if I had have had water left over, what's interesting about this is you can store your water at the top of your board, which means that the water is there in the water storage for a later turn, which of course frees up your deck to generate more food. So it can be useful to try and put water away um, for when you need it in a round when you're short on water. Now, the gameplay continues until someone reaches 10 victory points and then we do a game scoring check to see who's won the game. Someone might win by more than 10, but the game end is triggered at 10. But what's interesting is those victory points are split into two different counters. One counter is the victory points for your chickens. So your starter chickens, when they're on their neutral mood, are going to be worth one victory point each. But what you can do in this game is make your chickens delighted. And to do that, you have to not only feed them in a round, but give them the treat that they're asking for. If you can give them the food and, for example, um, a raisin uh, for this chicken, it's going to become really happy and the card's going to turn and now it's going to lay more eggs. For your starter chickens, it's not worth any more victory points or these chicken points, but for other chickens that you're going to be able to recruit from the market, you can see that, for example, this card, when it's really happy, it's worth four victory points and it's laying eight eggs. So mm. there are much more powerful chickens to be had. Now, speaking of eggs, eggs are the currency in this game and you're going to be collecting eggs each round according to the chickens in your flock. When they are neutral or really happy, that's when they're going to be at their egg laying best and you're going to be able to collect lots of eggs into your little buckets or baskets here, um, just like you would in real life. Um, but then what's interesting in this game is every round you have the opportunity to buy victory points and a victory point for the most part costs 12 eggs. And so you have to collect a lot of eggs to then be able to spend um, on, on buying these victory points that are going to contribute to that 10 total. So what you're looking for is to reach 10 with your um, chickens and their mood. Um, because they're all worth victory points, as well as the victory points that you're buying and monitoring with the second tracker. Once the combination of those reaches 10, that's when the game ends. The other, of course, important part in deck building is to really create a deck that is powerful and more powerful, of course, than your opponents. Mm. 
farms. Um, <laughs> so there is a market available where you can purchase cards for the, an egg cost. So chickens cost eggs, market cards cost eggs, and of course victory points cost eggs. So you're constantly trying to trade off spending more eggs to make a more powerful deck versus buying those victory points. There are um, cards that offer greater amounts of food and water and there are a whole host of unique cards that really give you different benefits in different rounds of the game um, and allow you to do things with your deck as well like reusing cards or cleaning out your deck as well so a big part of this game is also to thin your deck as with any deck builder and really the only other part of this game is the events. So in the advanced version of the game, you can bring in a deck of events and they are public events that will affect everybody for that round. And sometimes it's just a fine day and there is no event, but there are lots of positive and negative things that happen in that event deck. Now, I haven't really spoken about the negative things that happen to you in this game. Um, and that is really when you draw your six cards from your deck and you're unable to give a chicken food or water. So what happens as soon as you don't feed a chicken is they become very sad and they go into the sad mood where they're worth um, they're laying fewer eggs and they're worth fewer victory points. If you don't feed that same chicken again in the next round, they are going to run away and they're going to be worth negative victory points at the end of the game. Now, if you can feed it, but you can't give it water, it's going to attract one of these negative two egg tokens that will sit on that chicken and mean that it lays two fewer eggs um, every round until you're able to give that chicken a drink. Um, it's just a one-off token, they don't stack, um, but it is quite annoying <laughs> when you get to yeah. laying eggs and you've got all of these negative tokens. Well, you clearly have been watering your <laughs> chickens. Been watering your you chickens. Should yes, that's right. So now, what does it feel like to play backyard chickens? Well, I definitely feel like I am uh, very anxious about making sure that my chickens are happy with me. And every time that deck comes around, I'm like, am I going to have enough water and food mm. for these chickens? Um, obviously, just like any deck builder, you are very much at the mercy of what's in your deck. Uh, often, you will end up with a hand that is, you know, very fruitful in terms of food and very, very low on water, which is annoying but not devastating. But if it happens the other way around, um, yeah, those chickens are not going to be happy with you. And yeah. very quickly, if you um, if you overpopulate your coop and kind of uh, overcommit uh, based on the amount of food and drink, you very well going to be uh, facing some yeah. uh, revolt and uh, yeah, very unhappy chickens. And that's definitely not the way to go. And that's the interesting thing about this game because you'll have a really great round where you'll have excess food and water and you'll be like, well, I think I can take on more chickens. And so you'll then buy yeah. more of these chickens and as the more powerful chickens are giving you more eggs and more victory points, they also require much more food. Um, so this chicken, for example, needs three food and one water just to remain content. Mm. Um, so what you're doing is kind of weighing up the risk and reward of growing the size of your flock. And that's, I think, what makes this game really interesting and tense mm. is because you're kind of gambling and the fact that the chickens and their mood weigh so heavily <laughs> on your victory points, yeah. then if you have a really bad hand and all of a sudden you can't feed them and they all become sad, yeah, all of your victory points get stripped it away. Be, yeah. <laughs> and in the later rounds, you're really weighing up like, should I take another chicken on, yeah. on board for those victory points in the yeah. hope that I can feed them and yeah. keep them happy? Um, the whole thing of using the eggs as the, uh, the currency means that obviously it does make it very tight uh, and tricky when you're making that decision of, oh, do I get another chicken? Or, oh, do I kind of stop gambling with my food and make sure that I've got some of the higher powered uh, feeding carts or same with the water or oh you know maybe I really should be looking at making my my chickens a bit more delighted so that I can sort of get more uh, eggs out of my chickens every every turn so all of those decision al decisions alongside this whole thing of like oh but I also have a deck full of you know very scrappy mm. um, cards means that then yeah like the thinning of the deck versus the getting like I, I i it's got a really nice good good tension in that in that mm. balance um and yeah those events are usually i kind of found through some of the games i'm like oh, they're they're nothing to be scared of and then 
like it often happens, and just like you said recently, of uh, you kind of get lulled into a false sense of security, particularly if you have a hand where you're like, wow, oh, I had excess food and excess, and uh, yeah, and that's happened to me, where I'm like, oh, those events are fine, and then I might have gone a bit crazy when the uh, old water, water storage. storage, and then a <laughs> drought hit, and all of that evaporated and dried out, and uh, I was in trouble. So she I do not enjoy, very happy. I, I, yeah, that was one of those testing uh, moments <laughs> that, that I was like, oh no, but you know, I, things happen. I really like the, so there's a couple of mechanics here that, um, you know, one mechanic is that you can clear the market and, um, just for the cost of one egg. And that is a worthwhile thing to do because often you're just looking for it. Maybe you need more water in your deck and there's no water card so you can refresh the deck. And that helps at a two player mm. count as well. Um, we have played it at two players and multiplayer as well and found that it moves quite nicely even at two players um, because you yep. can refresh that market. The other thing I really think is interesting is just the mood mechanic, mm -hmm. like just making your chickens happy and then them so quickly flipping and turning yeah. really angry or sad. And I'm not sure how flippant a chicken's mood is. Yeah, but they're really that fickle. Yeah, but Look, I did if you find, don't feed me, I'm going to be quite fickle as well. But I did find that there was a lot of involuntary thematic what do you call them? Like the, <laughs> Your the, noises. the sounds. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. sounds. So yeah. there was a lot of clucking during this game. <laughs> but also I thought it was it's really cute how each of the cards have, have a name associated with it. Yeah. So I often found myself going, Ooh, Dolores, I'm gonna give you a peanut mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. gonna be so happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, yeah. you know, kind of playing into the theme, like mm. the theme is really nicely applied here. Yeah. So who is this game for and why would you back it? Um one of the things with this is obviously at its core, it's a deck builder. If you love deck builders, then definitely pay close attention because this is a very pure, you know, sort of all of the goodies of a deck builder are built into this. I found from a difficulty of getting into it, it's, it's again, like it was a fairly easy game to uh, to learn. It's a very, very easy game to teach. Mm -hmm. And even for someone who's not, you know, a heavy gamer, I, yeah, the, the rules overhead would be, Fairly easy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Would you use it as a uh, potentially as a gateway game? Because the the theme is is sort of quirky and different enough that someone would be like, ah, oh, okay. Let's... Um, I think it can be punishing if you're you know you're not picking up the mechanics quickly enough, or you over invest in chickens. Mm -hmm. Like you could be left behind pretty easily. But I would say that it is um, in terms of getting to know a deck builder. Um, absolutely, because the theme is really engaging, and I think that because a lot of people have own chickens or have thought about owning chickens and mm. it's really understood how they produce and and that produce eggs and that type of things that it, it really and you can give them treats like it just yeah. kind of makes logical sense mm. which really helps with the idea of what you're trying to do so i would be i would gladly teach someone about deck building yep. using this but probably um, I would say that as long as they're kind of a gamer already, maybe mm. it's not the first game that I would get out because it is really thinky and it's hard to hit those 10 victory mm. points. It's quite a tense race between all of the gamers that we've played with. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that the player boards, even though this is all, of course, a prototype, the player, player boards I found really useful because not only do they keep track of how many eggs do you have and the victory points, but they also have all of the steps. And I, and I often found myself just reading those out as we go through the steps of the game. So I found that really helpful. Yeah. So that is our preview of Backyard Chickens. If you're interested to check this game out, we'll put the link down in the description below. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel and we'll be back with more board game content soon. Bye for now. Bye.